So in this video, we're going to show you how to pass variables from one subroutine to the other uh, to remove any duplication of code that you're having to write. And the best way to describe it is with some code I've already written in here. So it's very basic. And all we're literally doing is we've got a table of employees here in column A to D. And you can see we have another smaller column of oh, table, sorry, over here in column G. And you can see we've got in the main table, we've got this employee ID of A104. And in our second one, we have A104, and we've also got some additional information for that individual. So the basics of our code is we've defined that we want to take this information and reformat it and place it into its desired location in our destination table. So what I've got is some very basic code, and obviously I'm not saying this is the way to do this. You might want to make it a lot more dynamic, um, obviously rather than a fixed only updating this one ID, but please put those thoughts aside and just go with the um, the principle of this, what it's just trying to show for a basic example. So if we were to run this first subroutine, you can see it just takes the name Tim from our second table and places it in the desired spot in name for A104 here. For age, it does the same for age, and lastly country, it does the same for country. So as you can see, it's very basic, but what we're having to do in each subroutine is duplicate, obviously, various numbers of references. So for argument's sake, we have to set, redefine the sheet name in every subroutine. So you can see it's defined in each one here. Uh, and obviously that last one there. We're also having to do the employee ID. Obviously, that's done three times. And three times are also identifying the desired row to place that or the desired row in which the information should be placed. So they don't need to be put in this multiple times. Therefore, we have the benefit of passing um, each of these variables through to other subroutines. And you can do this uh, in well, multiple ways, but two particular ways that I do is you could either call the subroutine at the end of each subroutine, so it kind of creates a daisy chain effect um, to go through the subroutines, or what I prefer to do is to create another subroutine altogether so that it actually sort of pulls together all of your individual subroutines. So in order to do that, I'm gonna just enter here sub, and we'll call this um, run all for lack of better phrase. And obviously that's created a subroutine for us and let's just tidy these up. So what we need to do here is we just need to identify obviously what our continuously used variables are. So for us, it would be uh, pretty much all of them really. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do is define that up here. So go dim ws1 as worksheet. Uh, if I can spell worksheet. Uh, what have I spelled there? At worksheet, there we go. And then the next one is uh, i as integer, so dim i as integer. And dim e id, so employee id, as a string. So once we've done that, we then need to go set uh, ws1 equals this workbook dot sheets, open brackets, and it's going to be sheet number one, like so. Uh, we can then obviously do our to state what our employee ID is. Well, we could have done that. Let's just do it above. It sort of makes it a bit easier to see. The employee ID equals A104. So that's a string. And then the last part we need to do is, okay, find where that um, employee ID is. And to do that, I'm using match. And all match does is obviously it takes this value or this ID of A104, and it's going to just return the row in which it appears within column A. So simple as that. And obviously we can then use that row number to obviously define where we're gonna be adding these values to. So we're gonna do i equals worksheet function dot match. And if you're familiar with using it in, um, in Excel, the actual Excel formula is exactly the same. It's just obviously you put worksheet, worksheet function at the front here when we're using VBA. And we want to go in ws1 dot range a, column A in other words, comma zero, so we can get an exact match, and then that will return to us our value. So just to demonstrate that, image message box one, I often do this just to make sure things are working. You can see it's returned to us the number five, and if we were to look in column A, we can see, yep, it is, uh, A104 is in row five. So that gives us our starting position for everything when it comes to adding the values in here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and then the next part would be now to actually add our variables. 
So for us, what we're going to do is call each subroutine uh, on its own uh, so that it can actually place that variable in for us. And again, like I say, the subroutines are going to be very small and you probably think, why do you not just do this all in one? But I'm just trying to define or trying to show in a very simple manner how we can pass obviously these various different types of variables into all the different um, subroutines. And obviously you can then obviously expand upon this and I'm sure you'll have more complicated and more detailed ways of wanting to use this. So the first thing we'll need to do is we can remove some data from, so the first thing we have to do is add name. So in order for us to call that subroutine, uh, to, for, obviously it will happen after this code is run, all we need to simply put in here is add underscore name and that would call that subroutine. So if I was to run this now and we'll probably remove some data from here, you can see all it does is obviously this is restoring all this data, but ultimately after it, it then just calls this subroutine of add name to which it does the same adding of the variables at the moment. Um, but all it's going to then do is obviously add the name Tim. So that is how you can call a subroutine after. But we're going further than that. So what we need to do now is we can see all these variables have already been predefined. So we don't need any of this information because it's already stored for us. So we can just delete all those like that. But what we need to do now is obviously define in here, so in these brackets, what we've never previously populated before in these videos, we need to now define all of those variables so we can bring them in. So to put them in order, what we're going to have is WS1 as worksheet. So that's the first variable we want to pull in. The second one we want to pull in is the um, I, so I as integer. And you'll notice when doing it in the brackets, you don't actually need to add the word dim. Um, so I as integer, and then the last one we've got E ID as string. So that's all those added for us. And then all we need to do here is where we've got our add name is simply do a space at the end, and we now just need to put the corresponding um, variables that align to these. So simply put, if I put WS1, so obviously that is the worksheet, and you can see as I'm typing it here, it's telling me to add name and it says obviously one is worksheet, next is the integer and the next one is string. So we just need to make sure that these variables obviously align with what we've coded in that brackets below. Uh, and all that does is didn't, it obviously passes our actual stored value onto that next subroutine. So do WS1, uh, I can then do I for the integer, another comma for EID. If I then just uh, cursor off, you can see how it's added the space and we know it's formatted for us. And then the benefit of that is it means all we need in here is simply just this one single line of code, um, what literally just does the storing of the name. And we can obviously reduce that down if you want, but uh, yes, yeah, reduce it down, looks a bit tidier. And then the next thing we can do is obviously do the same for all of these other subroutines. So let's just delete all that information out of there. Let's delete all this information out of here. Tab that across, tab that across just to tidy it up. And then we'll just do that. And I'm simply going to cheat because they're all the same. So all I'm going to do is copy all of this. We've got this one here. Paste into these other subroutines like so. I'm then going to literally go down onto here and we'll do add underscore age. And then we've got WS1. We've got an integer and then we've got EID. And then the last one below, we've got add underscore country. And we've got WS1 comma I comma EID as well. And that is it. So what our routine is simply doing now is this first subroutine is going to do all of the storing of uh, or all the defining of all of our variables and storing the values for all those variables. And then once that's done, it just saves us from having to redo this information in each and every subroutine. And then all you need to do is call upon each subroutine in turn of which it will then pull through this predefined data and then obviously can execute the desired code. So if we were to run this now, simply all we've got to do is run this first one of run all. You can see it's gone through, stored the, the, um, the variables, and then passed that through to these following subroutines as well. So obviously you can probably, well, you will likely want to extend this further. So I'm sure you've got many different technical and more detailed subroutines than or in all means than I have here. But it just goes to show you how you can save yourself from having to type out certain variables multiple times in the various different multiple subroutines. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, uh, please do make sure you give the video a like as it'd be greatly appreciated by myself. If you have any questions at all, please do just leave me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell 
bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. And lastly, thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.